hello beautiful people and welcome to my channel where we are consciously seeking innovative ways of creating and maintaining a more healthier and a more harmonious relationship with mother nature today i would like to talk about our disconnection from the natural environment so there's this widely accepted idea that we are less connected to the natural environment than people who lived back in them days i mean i also believe that and i always kind of talk about it i'm always on the tip of go back to mother nature form that relationship understand the relationship and have a more harmonious relationship with that mother nature but the question is how have we measured that up as a society to conclude that the connection to mother nature has been being lost through time how can we really tell how can we really measure that up and so i found this question really interesting and so i did my research and it was interesting to see that quite a lot of researchers have been asking themselves this question and they have conducted studies after studies and researches and 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 but one study that actually stood out for me was by the Kesabir twin sisters their research methods were pretty interesting and creative and the results were obviously interesting and so i thought about sharing the study with you guys i really hope that it's going to inspire you in some way and that you're going to enjoy this video and the info that comes with the video without talking too much let's just get right to today's video First things first, if you want to find out how our connection to the natural environment has changed over time, you are going to have to measure how connected we are to the natural environment compared to past generations. So obviously the Kasabiak sisters considered all the ways in which humans connect with the natural environment or interact with the natural environment and the difficulty of capturing that data. I mean, how can you really count all the times people stop to watch a sunset or listen to birds or choose to walk in a tree-lined street because they choose to or choose to go to a park a forest for his bathe simply because they choose to and want to connect with the natural environment of course they can ask these questions to us as the people have surveys and questionnaires and all of that but they cannot ask people who lived a hundred years ago and for this study to make sense they need to gather not, not gather they need to gather they need to gather gather the data of people who lived 100 years ago and obviously that kind of seems complicated challenging and impossible and so their beautiful creative minds came up with the idea of turning to cultural products which are your books your movies your documentaries your songs your poetry just works of popular culture in general so the reasoning behind this was that the cultural products that we create reflect the times that we live in and should reflect the extent to which nature occupies our collective consciousness so if novelists songwriters filmmakers have fewer encounters with the natural environment or if these encounters have less of an impression on them or if they don't expect their audiences to respond to these natural encounters that they have then nature should feature less in their works kind of makes sense right so to make it easy for themselves the Kesebiak sisters created a list of 186 nature related words belonging to four categories which are the general words such as autumn cloud lake moonlight names of flowers such as bluebell edelweiss foxglove rose names of trees such as cedar libanum white beam willow and names of birds such as finch hummingbird meadowlark and spoonbill so after they created this list of 186 nature related words they then checked how frequently these words appeared in the works of popular culture including english fiction books that were written between 1901 and year 2000 and songs that were listed as top 100 between 1950 and 2011 and storylines of movies made between 1930 and 2014. So across millions and millions of fiction books and books in general and thousands and thousands of songs and hundreds of thousands of movie and documentary storylines, their analysis showed a clear and consistent trend that is nature features significantly less in the works of popular culture today than it did in the first half of the 20th century with a steady decline after the 1950s. For example, for every three nature related words in the popular songs of the 1950s, there is slightly, slightly more than one 50 years later. 
that is one hell of a decline that is just a lot it's like nature related words basically you know disappeared you know in our cultural conversations in our collective imagination in our collective consciousness what happened i mean even if you think about it which songs really do you know you know by you know off the top that you can say that they have nature related words or nature related theme or any nature agenda in them you know that can clearly be seen and understood really really can you really even think of one if you can because i cannot if you can let's sit down below let's talk about it let's have a conversation about it put us on to show how much things have changed over time in the study they actually listed some of the hit titles that made it to top 100 in 1957 and they included um you know titles such as butterfly moonlight gambler white silver sands rainbow honeycomb in the middle of an island over the mountain across the sea blue hill blueberry hill and dark moon I actually googled these just to confirm which this is real. You can google it for yourself. Just search top 100 billboard songs 1957 or top 100 songs 1957 and you will find these hit titles there. And then check the hit titles top 100 billboard songs as era 2020 and you'll be shocked there's literally maybe three nature related titles of songs that is really sad like what happened what changed i mean even when you read one of the oldest books you know in history which is the bible maybe not the oldest but it is one of the oldest you can see Uguti nature plays a significant role in painting a picture of the kind of experiences these people had of the kind of lifestyle that these people had nature provides you know a backdrop to an imagery of love you know the the, the sense of lifestyle it, it just gives you you know that actually i i actually checked out this one verse by songs of solomon like songs of solomon is so poetic and hence it is the one that i actually chose to check out some verses so that i can make this reference so songs song of solomon 2 it says i am the rose of sharon and the lily of the valleys as the lily among thorns so is my love among the daughters as the apple tree among the trees of the wood so is my beloved among the sons i sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste i mean <laughs> like I mean, you can, like, just what I was saying, we have all know which nature was a part of who they were. It was part of the conversations. Okay, it was part of the conversation. It was part of the art. It was just them. Okay. And in a way, you know, it, it really kind of makes sense. You know, this is my own opinion, you know. We would see like you know back in the days the world was not as urbanized as it is today there wasn't really so much of um you know virtual recreational you know options there wasn't really like technology any technological changes that are actually keeping us more indoors where now for those people that lived back then nature was be was basically a part of their life it was the source of their inspiration they wrote what they saw they wrote what they experienced and that was mother nature unlike us where we live in a more technological world where our source of inspiration is more of digital things technological things i mean even when you check out the movies that today really really the backdrop you know of these movies is more of you know the technological minimalistic things and not really nature and when nature is shown in the media or in the movies or in the songs it's more of like our ah, woke consciousness you know therapeutic uh, things and not really a need a necessity something that you cannot live without something that you really really need for your well-being you know so that is my own opinion when it comes to that but what happened what happened because right now like i really cannot think of a movie or a document and even when you check out the documentaries that are about natural environment things it's not really about the love of nature the value that we should see in nature how we should strive 
you know uh, strive to connect with the natural environment is more about the distraction that we are causing to the natural environment it's more about how bad we are towards the natural environment and how we are contributing to the destruction of mother nature and never really what can we do what value does mother nature have in our lives and how can we just have a more harmonious relationship with the natural environment even the documentaries none of that no one is talking about the positivity that exists between humans and the natural environment it's always the emphasis on how we are destroying our own mother nature our own natural environment and how that in turn is going to affect us and not really what we can do and that is why literally i started my youtube channel so that i show you guys that there is so much there is so much that you can gain from the natural environment and just from that mother nature also gains literally just from that it may sound so selfish as well but you seeing value in mother nature 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 benefits so much you know what i'm saying so that is my own analysis that is my own you know i don't know thoughts when it comes to the explanation of how just nature related things have just disappeared in the collective you know conversations in our today's society it's worth remembering that cultural products such as songs and films not only reflect the prevailing culture they also shape it modern artists have the opportunity to send the message that nature is worth paying attention to and to help awaken the curiosity and appreciation and respect for nature as some did back in the 60s and 70s artistic creations that help us connect with nature are crucial at a time like this when nature seems to need our attention and care more than ever works of popular culture not only influence the society but also shape it like right now if any celebrity does anything whether it's a hairstyle a, a clothing anything every goddamn person does that very same thing like it becomes you know the standard of coolness the standard of greatness the standard of dopeness and if you cannot do that if you do not have that if you cannot afford that then you're not as dope you're not as great as everybody else everything these days is literally a trend everybody is doing what everybody is doing and if you cannot do that then you are not part of the cool kids and so imagine if your favorite celebrity if your favorite influencer is now first bathing and they are sharing with you their journey of first bathing the benefits that they are gaining from first bathing are you trying to tell me that you are not even going to try for his bathing of course the world is going to try for his bathing imagine which celebrity can i make an example of okay i love movies so taraji p henson imagine if taraji started for his bathing how many people are going to try freaking first bathing huh and just from that alone people start seeing value in forests not the environment as a whole not uh fixing the world uh solving the problems but the people are going to see the value in forests and what is that going to do they're going to love forests they are going to want to find ways to protect the forest they're going to find ways to you know build i have do you build or do you create create you know new forests freaking plant trees people are gonna come up with ideas of, on how to preserve these forests and just from that there is just you know this wave of pro environmental attitudes that is just you know waving out to other people and it becomes a movement it becomes a thing it becomes a part of us you know what i'm saying so dear artists out there can you infuse some environmental love into your works okay let you know let nature be a backdrop to the story that you are trying to tell to the experiences that you want your audiences to get and understand you know let nature breathe some life into your art or at least they make it more beautiful make it more you know i don't know interesting um but anyways thank you so much for watching today's video till the end baby you know i always always appreciate that please do like share comment and click the notification button freaking subscribe if you have not 
you have those experiences love mother nature dear artists infuse mother nature into your works of art you know spread some nature love okay <laughs> spread some nature love have a nature trend a loving nature trend or some okay and i cannot wait to see you on my next video mm -hmm.